Well, good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer on Wednesday, the 22nd of December, two days before Christmas. Hope all of you are well and looking forward to the festivities and all ready and prepared for Christmas. Let's have a moment this morning as we come to prayer. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Reveal among us the light of your presence, that we may behold your power and glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God of all, to you be praise and glory forever. In your tender compassion, the dawn from on high is breaking upon us, to dispel the lingering shadows of night. As we look to your coming among us this day, open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Last Sunday, I was able to spend a little bit of time in my garden, something I haven't done for a long time. One of the biggest challenges I have is the verse that says, be still and know that I am God. But I did manage that yesterday, last Sunday afternoon, where I sat in the garden and I was picking the French beans left over from the summer and gathering the um, seeds from within them. Now, I brought one of them along to show you, if you can see that. But these are my French beans that are hanging up in the garden at the moment. And on the outside, it's pretty grim, isn't it? They're all mouldy and really not very good. But if you open them inside, what is revealed are some beautiful white beans ready for next year now as i was doing this and trying to and being still i was doing it and knowing and reflecting on god i was reminded of the passage from isaiah isaiah 43 verse 19 which says behold i am about to do something new see i have already begun do you not see it i will make a pathway through the wilderness i will create rivers in the dry wasteland now, those words I felt are particularly appropriate for us at this time, this time of great uncertainty, to have those reassuring words of, behold, I am going to do something new and see, I have already begun. And I hope this morning some of those words may be of a little comfort to us during these uncertain times. Here is a song of the King's glory. The earth is the Lord's and all that fills it, the compass of the world and all who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and set it firm on, upon the rivers of the deep. Who will ascend the hill of the Lord? Who can rise up in this holy place? Those who have clean hands and a pure heart, who have not lifted up their soul to an idol, nor sworn an oath to a lie. They shall receive blessings from the Lord, a just reward from the God of their salvation. Such is the company of those who seek him, of those who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates. Be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, who is mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O oh God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The appointed psalm this morning is Psalm 144, 124, and the refrain is, our help is in the name of the Lord. If the Lord himself has not, had not been on our side, now may Israel say, 
If the Lord had not been on our side when enemies rose up against us, then they would have been swallowed up alive with their anger burned against us. Then the waters who overwhelmed us and the torrent gone over our soul, over our soul would have swept the raging waters. But blessed be the Lord who has not given us over to the prey of their teeth. Our soul has escaped as a bird from the snail of the fowler. The snare is broken and we are delivered. Our help is in the name of the Lord who has made heaven and earth. O oh God, maker of heaven and earth, you saved us in the waters of baptism, and by your suffering of your son, you set us free. Help us to put our trust in his victory and to know the salvation won for us by Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Old Testament reading this morning is taken from Malachi, chapter 2, verses 17 to chapter 3, verse 12. You have wearied the Lord with your words, yet you say, how have we wearied him? By saying, all who do evil are good in the sight of the Lord, and he delights them, or by asking, where is the God of justice? See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and a full of soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offerings of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old and as in former years. Then I will draw near to you for judgment. I will be swift to bear witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, against those who swear falsely, against those who oppress the hired workers in their wages, the widow and the orphan, against those who thrust aside the alien. And do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. For I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore you, O children of Jacob, have not perished. Ever since the days of your ancestors, you have turned aside from my statues and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you say, how shall we return? Will anyone rob God? Yet you are not robbing me. But you say, how are we robbing you? In your tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you are robbing me. The whole nation of you. Bring, bring me the full tithe into the storehouse, so that there may be food in my house. And thus put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts. See, if I do not, if I, if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you an overflowing of blessing, I will rebuke, revoke, rebuke the locusts for you, so that you will not destroy the produce of your soul. And your vine in the field shall not be barren, says the Lord of hosts. Then all the nations can count you happy, for you will be in the land of delight, says the Lord. I love those words, for I, the Lord, do not change. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our New Testament reading is taken from Matthew, chapter 19, verses 16 to the end. Someone came to Jesus and said, Teacher, what good, must, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? And he said to them, why do you ask me about what is good? There is only one who is good. If you wish to enter into life, keep the commandments. He said to them, which ones? And Jesus said, you shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother also. You shall love the neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, I have kept all these. What do I still lack? Jesus said to him, if you wish to be perfect, go sell your possessions and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then 
come and follow me. When the young man heard this word, he went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Truly I tell you, it will be hard for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astounded and said, Then who can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said, for mortals, it is impossible. But for God, all things are possible. Then Peter said in reply, look, we have left everything and followed you. What then will we have? Jesus said to them, truly, I tell you, at the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man is seated on the throne of his glory, you who have followed me will sit on the 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And anyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or fields for my name's sake will receive a hundredfold and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last will be first. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now it is time to wake out of sleep, for the night is far spent and the day is at hand. Now our salvation nearer than we have first believed, for the night is far spent. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and put on the armour of light, for the day is at hand. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh, for the night is far spent and the day is at hand. Our gospel canticle this morning is taken from Romans chapter 13. And the refrain is this. Like the sun in the morning sky, the saviour of the world will dawn. Like rain upon the meadows, the Christ will come down upon us. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. To show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath that God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. A new child shall be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give people knowledge of his salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God and the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in the darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet in the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And as we move into our prayers this morning, we're reminded of some of those words that we had this morning, that for God nothing is impossible, and the Lord is, is always with us. And also, behold, that God is doing a new thing. I think all these are promises that we need to take to heart this morning and remembering my mouldy beans and what's inside those beans. Something new, something good. So we come to our prayers. Lord, we hold before you the tasks of today. Lord, as we approach Christmas in such uncertainty, we remember the words that you are always with us. Lord, be there in the middle of the conversations we have today. Help us to shine your light to the people we meet today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, this morning we pray for your world. For all of us this morning, we have special places that we regularly pray for. 
Let us bring those places to Jesus now. Praying that the light of Christ will shine there during this Christmas time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray now for our benefits. So many of our Christmas traditional services have now gone virtual. Lord, we hold those services before you now. And we pray that they will reach people who would not normally come to church, that more people will hear of your light and your word more than would be than if they came to church. Lord, we pray that these people will see the light of Christmas this year. And we hold before you now our families and friends, especially those people that are anxious about Christmas, anxious about not seeing family and friends. anxious about becoming ill. Lord, we pray for peace for them now. And Lord, we also pray now for those who are ill, for those with COVID. We also pray especially for those people who are not able to access healthcare due to the pandemic, for those that are living with daily pain, these operations have been postponed. We pray for healing in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those that are working in the NHS over Christmas. Thank you, Lord, for their service. And Lord, we pray for strength and encouragement and protection as they work through Christmas. And for all of us, I'm reminded of the prayer that says, Lord, give us grace to accept the things we cannot change. Courage to change the things we can. And wisdom to know the difference. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And the colleague for today. God, our Redeemer, who prepared the Blessed Virgin Mary to be the mother of your Son, grant that as she looked for his coming as our Saviour, so we may be ready to greet him when he comes again as our Judge, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And awaiting his coming in glory, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And our conclusion this morning, I'd like to use the words again from Isaiah 43, verse 19. Behold, I am about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness and I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. Amen. So wishing you all a really good Christmas and may you all feel Christ's presence with you throughout this festive period and beyond. <laughs>